Do you ever wonder what is Hodgkin's lymphoma versus non-Hodgkin's lymphoma versus leukemia? I know that a lot of places treat lymphoma leukemia together, a lot of clinics. Uh, I know that lymphoma and leukemia society goes together often. So I just wanted to not go down the rabbit hole too far because it's so easy to get into that, but just kind of um, on the surface explain what are those three. I'm really going to focus on what's the difference between Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's, but I first wanted to just say a quick blurb about what is leukemia. So leukemia is a cancer of the blood, where the lymphoma is a cancer of the lymphatic system and the lymph nodes. So the lymph nodes are part of the whole lymphatic system where leukemia affects the bone marrow and blood. What is a lymph node? So maybe you have had your lymph nodes swell a little bit and you felt them here. This is a really common place to feel them. I know for me I have this one here that is constantly enlarged. It just happens to it got enlarged and it never changed. It's been checked on many times, but this is where it's at. But there are lymph nodes all over our body, and I will be inserting some pictures because it's easier to show exactly where they are located. So often we can feel them here. They're, say, one to two centimeters uh, when they're not swollen. We've got them here in the neck, here, under the arm. This is the clavicle area, under the arm axillary and in the groin and then like I said um, mediastinal area all along this area and all over the body and so our lymph nodes can swell and cause problems for various reasons it's not always cancer although I know it can be scary and it should always be looked up by a provider but it doesn't always mean that that's um, cancer it can mean your lymph nodes are swollen due to an infection, due to allergies, due to pink eye, um, illness, COVID-19, mono, strep throat. There's so many reasons why our lymph nodes react the way they do. And it's good that they do because they're helping our body fight off this uh, illness, whether it's bacterial or viral. They swell with cancer. Uh, lymph. Well, with leukemia, it can be as well, but I'm really referring to Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. But they swell because the cancer starts in the lymphatic system with this particular type of cancer. And what differentiates Hodgkin's from non-Hodgkin's? First, how would the provider diagnose this? Um, like with most illnesses or cancers, it would be history and physical, labs, perhaps a PET scan, MRI, CT, um, and then a biopsy. That is what is going to differentiate non-Hodgkin's lymphoma from Hodgkin's, is a biopsy of a lymph node or lymph nodes that go to pathology and are looked at under the microscope. Sometimes they take a part of a lymph node or a whole lymph node or parts of several lymph nodes. It really just depends on what that particular oncologist, surgeon, doctor would like to do. The differentiating factor with Hodgkin's lymphoma is that it is a B cell, an abnormal B cell, where with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, it can be B or T cells. But with Hodgkin's, it's only B. And the cell that they are looking for is called the Reed-Sternberg cell or cells. That is what is going to be seen under the microscope that would then tell the doctor that it is Hodgkin's lymphoma and not non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And so each of these has subcategories uh, underneath them. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma has then a bunch under here and Hodgkin's lymphoma over here. So which one is more prevalent? Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is more prevalent by approximately 90% to 10% to Hodgkin's lymphoma. Non-Hodgkin's is more common. Let's talk about the symptoms. Both of them, including leukemia and other cancers, can have overlapping symptoms. But with the lymphomas, it generally is going to be that enlarged lymph node or lymph nodes. That is kind of the tell. Um, and a lot of fatigue, perhaps. And I'm saying that this is generally what people have. But of course, there's people who have completely different symptoms or they have no symptoms at all other than an enlarged lymph node that just doesn't go away. But um, sometimes there's night sweats, uh, like I said, a lot of fatigue, um, inability to feel well, loss of appetite, fever, if I didn't already say that. So you would go to your provider, they would 
maybe order some labs at that time and some imaging, but they would give you a consult then if appropriate, if it's ruled out that it's not strep throat or something else or mono, and then you would see an oncologist, somebody who specializes in leukemia or lymphoma. So again, there are about 800 or so uh, lymph nodes throughout our entire body. Like I said, when they're not um, enlarged, they are approximately one to two centimeters. And again, Hodgkin's is B cell only, that particular type of B cell called Reed Sternberg, and non-Hodgkin's can be B cell or T cell. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma accounts for approximately 90%, and Hodgkin's lymphoma is 10%, approximately. I wanted to mention that Many years back, my oldest son, and it just happened to come on the heels of the loss of our baby uh, with the stillbirth, but he became very ill and he had all the symptoms. He had um, axillary and um, cl uh, clavicle area enlargement of his lymph nodes. He had profuse sweating at night. He had weight loss. He didn't feel well. He couldn't go to school. Just the classic symptoms. So he was ruled out for lymphoma. He was with an oncologist during that time. He was nine years old, scared out of my wits. He, what is going on here? So a lot of other things, like I mentioned, can mimic this. So they ruled him out for mono, Epstein-Barr virus, cat scratch fever, which I think they call cat scratch disease now. He was ruled out for all kinds of unusual, um, very different types of illnesses. Um, but they really thought it was lymphoma. So then it came time for the biopsy of this particular one that was still there, these as well, but this was very big. But then he got better, just miraculously started to get better. But this is an illness that went on for, I would say approximately two months total time, start to finish. But he did not have lymphoma, thank God. And um, but what he had, we will never know. So just keep that in mind that a lot of things can look like lymphoma, but not be. And it can follow all of the symptoms that are classic for a type of cancer. Both Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, as well as leukemia, have made incredible strides over the years. And I'm really fortunate here in my state because uh, the Fred Hutchison Cancer Center is one of the premier centers in the United States that treat this. But you don't have to come to a place that uh, is one of the premier in the United States. They do share information. And remember, you can always get, if you're diagnosed with this, a second opinion, a third opinion, go where you want, and then um, get your treatment appropriately on what your um, those physicians have suggested for you. But the survivability is incredible now. The treatment is incredible. It's not just chemotherapy anymore. It's not just radiation maybe anymore. It's not the typical things. It is more advanced for treatment into immunotherapy and targeted therapies that have great, great success. What are the factors that affect how well someone's going to do and the survivability in general? That would be um, how well the person is at time of diagnosis, what the staging is. Remember, there's always stage one, stage two, and so forth. The age and overall health, like I mentioned, of the person, because age is a factor for these cancers. Um, and I won't go into all that, but um, depending on the person's age, survivability at this age is better than that age, for example. And then response to treatment, that is always a big one for all uh, treatments for cancer. Why is it that some people respond amazingly and other people don't respond at all to that particular treatment? It has to do with their uh, DNA, um, their immune system, like I said, the uh, staging and many other factors. So with the Hodgkin's lymphoma, that's Reed Sternberg cell that they're looking for under the microscope to differentiate if it's Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's, I thought it was just interesting, you know, how these uh, diseases and other things are named after people. Like, isn't the Heimlich maneuver named after Dr. Heimlich? I don't know. But anyway, I thought this was really cool because this lady here, let's talk about her. She is Dorothy Reed Mendenhall, and she passed away in 1964, was born in 1874. She is an American pathologist, and she is one of the first women to graduate from Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. And yes, it's Johns with an S. Um, in 1902, she published her findings on the distinct large abnormal cells that are seen in Hodgkin's disease, now called Hodgkin's lymphoma. But uh, then in another place, this pathologist named Carl Sternberg 
who's from uh, Austria, independently described similar cells in Hodgkin's disease around the same time as Dorothy Reed in 1898. Both of these scientists made pivotal contributions to identifying and characterizing these cells so that diagnosing Hodgkin's lymphoma versus non-Hodgkin's could occur. And then the advantage to that, of course, is, you know, not just cookie cutter treating them all the same, but, you know, if you've got Hodgkin's versus non-Hodgkin's, now you know which direction to take and what treatments would work for your particular type of lymphoma. A fun fact about the American pathologist Dorothy Reed, and that is that people used to think Hodgkin's lymphoma was a type of tuberculosis. And she, from her work um, in pathology, was the one who was able to pull that out and not keep that in the category of a type of tuberculosis at that time. I hope this was helpful. Thank you all for my new subscribers, for every single person that comes here to see me, to listen to this. I hope it is interesting for you as it is for me. If you like myths and facts about medicine, if you like um, misconceptions and just different things and maybe some medical mishaps and oopsies, if you're into that kind of thing, as well as stories about medicine, please consider subscribing. And if there is a topic that you are interested in hearing about, please comment below. I'll see you next time.